Bon matin, mesdames et messieurs. Bienvenue à la Conseil municipal pour la Ville d'Ottawa pour le 29. Welcome to City Council meeting on August 29. August 2018. Uh, for those who are able to, could you please rise for a moment of personal reflection and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem. If you could remain standing, we'll ask our colleague Riley Brockington to uh, introduce our very special guest who will sing our national anthem. Thank Council. you, Your Worship, and members of Council. It's great to see everyone back after our brief summer break. Um, it is my honor to introduce River Ward resident Claudia Salguero. Claudia is a Latin jazz singer, a visual artist, professional photographer, digital artist, teacher, and art-based facilitator with the Arts Health Network of Canada. She works with children, youth, adults, and communities at risk through various institutions such as Ottawa Community Housing, the Youth Service Bureau, Crime Prevention Ottawa, and various community resource and health centers developing art and recycling art projects. In 2017, the AOE Arts Council awarded Claudia with the One, Canada 150 Neighborhood Arts Grant for the creation of her mural, Canadian Pride, Harmony and Cultures, which is proudly displayed on the exterior of the Hunt Club Riverside Park Community Centre in River Ward. More recently, she has worked with CPO and the Carlington Community Association on a mural project for Maryville Road. In addition to her amazing artistry skills, she is a recognized Latin jazz singer in Ottawa. She performs annual sought out concerts at the <coughs> NAC, accompanied by her 10-piece band. She's been raising funds for children's foundations in her home country of Colombia since 2011. And if you get a chance to attend one of her concerts, I strongly recommend you attend. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Claudia Salguero. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, to pay to love in all of us come and car ton bras se porte le paye il s'importe la croix ton histoire est une épopée le plus brillant se exploit God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Well, thank you very, very much, Claudia. Beautiful rendition of our national anthem to start our meeting. Merci beaucoup, Claudia. It's now my honor to invite uh, Chris uh, Nimi to the podium for this uh, meeting's uh, City Builder Award presentation. Chris, if you'd like to come forward, along with your counselor, uh, Councillor Michael Kakish. Alors, j'invite maintenant Chris Nimi à mon... Chris Nimi will now come to the podium for the Council's City Builder Award. It's his dad, Michael, who is with us here today. Chris is an Ottawa-based mental health advocate, author, presenter, and teacher who has used his life experiences to provide hope and healing to others. Chris was chosen as uh, one of Canada's five faces of mental illness and mental health by the Canadian Alliance on Mental Illness and Mental Health and, the, and is a Canadian ambassador for mental health across our nation. For over a decade, Chris battled three life-debilitating illnesses, bipolar disorder, obsessive-compulsive disorder, and generalized anxiety disorder. 
In 2013, Chris released his poignant memoir, Two Sides to the Story, Living a Lie, relating how he was an inch from death and mustered every bit of faith, strength, and courage to get back on his feet. In the last few years, he has shared his story at over 100 venues with students and teachers, parents and professionals, and he continues to expand his speaking engagements from coast to coast to coast. I know that Chris's story, his passion and strength rooted in his own dark experiences, has, has saved people's lives and has helped many to find their own path forward. I would like to conclude with some inspiring and insightful words from Chris's website, chrisnimi.com. Quote, fighting stigma also depends on you. We're all in this fight to increase acceptance and compassion in our hearts. Speak up and encourage sufferers to step into the light and share their stories. That's when hope builds. That's when healing begins. Healing does happen, end quote. It's a true honor, Chris, to recognize you with this meeting's City Builder Award, along with your counselor, Michael Kakish, and we thank you for the great work you continue to do uh, in our city and around the country. Congratulations. given a bit of time to say a few words, so I thought I'd read some excerpts from my book. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is such an honor. I, I never expected this. Um, I, I've, my life is now becoming all about the mental health. And the biggest message that I share is that you're not alone and it's not your fault. And I think that a lot of times we feel that way when we're struggling and suffering. So I'd like to take the time first to thank Mayor Watson and Councillor Kakish for this award, and also the council for approving this. It's, uh, it's quite an honor to receive this and to know that my message is being heard. Um, I would not have made it here without my family. Uh, my dad is here today. My mother's with us from above. She passed away in 2014, um, breast cancer. But she's with me in everything I do, and I dedicate everything to her. Um, as I go along. And my sister is just as valuable in, in my healing as my whole family. So I want to thank them as well and thank the community for standing up, being supportive of what I do and realizing that I am here doing what I do because I've been through it, I understand, I know what's happening and you can reach out to me anytime through my website, through Facebook, anything, because I'm here for you. I don't want people to be lost and alone. I want them to know that they have people they can reach to, and the earlier they reach, the quicker the healing comes. And I'm proof that healing does happen, but you have to want it to happen, and the way the want comes is by having loving people around you who are encouraging you and pushing you and supporting you to heal. Pass that message to sufferers everywhere because they are not alone, and I just want them to know that I am here, and we're all here to help them in their path to healing. Thank you. Well, that was very thoughtful, Chris. Thank you very, very much for the work you continue to do. I now have the pleasure of presenting the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, FCM Increasing Women's Participation in Municipal Government Award. J'ai le plaisir de remettre le prix. I have the pleasure of presenting the FCM Increasing Women's Participation in Municipal Government Award. Standing Committee on Increasing Women's Participation in Municipal Government Awards scholar, award scholarships to young women who demonstrate exceptional leadership and a strong interest in local politics. The committee promotes and supports the participation of women in government and is working to ensure women make up 50% of municipal councils by the year 2026. It's my pleasure to invite Ms. Uh, Ayat Ibrahim to the podium for this special presentation. J'invite maintenant Madame Ayat Mrs. Ayat Ibrahim will now join us uh, for this special presentation. As well, I also ask uh, some of my colleagues to join us. 
uh, Councillor Tim Tierney, Chair of the uh, Ontario Caucus of the FCM Board of Directors, and uh, our, our female members of councillor, uh, Council, Councillors McKenney, Harder, uh, Deans, and Wilkinson to join us as well. And I also extend a warm welcome uh, to the family and friends of uh, Ms. Ibrahim who are here today. So welcome. Come on in, everyone. I'm sure you're all very proud with the many accomplishments of Ayat and thrilled with this significant recognition of her leadership, dedication, and abilities. Je tiens à souhaiter la plus cordiale bienvenue aux membres de la I wish to extend a warm welcome to the family and friends of Ms. Ibrahim who are here today. I'm sure you're all very proud of the many accomplishments of Ayat and thrilled with the significant recognition of her leadership, dedication, and abilities. Ibrahim is a recent graduate of Bridgemount. Come on in here a little closer to her. A graduate of Ridgemount High School, where she has been an active member of her school community throughout her four years here. Her participation has included being a student council representative, a grade representative, and a lead critic in a, in a theatrical review writing team called Cappy's Critics, which I've had the honor of attending at the NAC for the last several years. She's also a member of the uh, social equity group called Students for Change, a girls chat group that focuses on issues related to women's rights and equality. Ms. Ibrahim is described as a tenacious and hardworking leader with a strong sense of justice, fairness, and equality. She is recognized for her engaging interpersonal skills and for her confidence and sense of discipline, as well as her ability to think critically. These are important skills that are indispensable to civic engagement and leadership. FCM Selection Committee was most impressed with Ms. Ibrahim's leadership skills as well as, with, uh, as well as with her references and a research essay that she submitted. The committee promotes a positive working relationship between all people in a political environment and encourages women to consider becoming involved in municipal government through a variety of annual scholarship awards. La Fédération canadienne des municipalités the FCM is pleased to give Mrs. Ayat Ibrahim the award for women in municipal government. ...of Ms. Ibrahim with the official presentation of the certificate from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Congratulations on receiving the Canadian Women and Municipal Award Scholarship for outstanding leadership for, to your school and to your community. And I think your counselor, Riley Brockington. It's me. Oh, it's your, okay, you went to Ridgemount, okay. Felicitations pour obtenir de la bourse pour So congratulations on receiving the Canadian Women in Municipal Government Scholarship for outstanding leadership to your school and a community. Hello et bienvenue tout le monde. I am honored to be a recipient of the Woman in Municipal Government Scholarship. I would like to thank Mayor Jim Watson for presenting me with the certificate and inviting me and my family here today. I'd like to take the time to thank my parents for pushing me to work hard and inspiring me to achieve my dreams, to my dad for always being there for me, and to my mom for giving me great advice. I don't say it enough, but I appreciate everything you do for me. The first thing people notice about me is the fact that I'm a visible minority. I'm a black Muslim female, and I wear these labels as a badge of honor. I strongly believe the scholarship is not only important for me, but for other women that are striving for a brighter future. Education is the key for breaking stereotypes. It is what allows dreams to become reality. Through all the hardship and challenges that I have faced, my determination has been a driving force for me to keep working hard in school in order to succeed. The inclusion of women in politics would help inspire the upcoming generations to pursue their dreams. Women are the future, and living in a country like Canada has its benefits, seeing as back in 2015, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau decided to form an ethnically diverse and gender balanced cabinet. This shows that as a country, we are moving forward towards equality for all. By awarding me with the scholarship, you have allowed me to focus on the most important aspect of school, learning. 
Your generosity has inspired me to help others and give back to my community. I hope one day I will be able to help students achieve their goals just as you helped me and inspire females that no matter what color you are or what religion you follow, you can achieve what you are passionate about. Thank you. We'll just get your members of your family. Come on up here, your mom and dad and your sister. We'll get your family to come up here and we'll get a picture with uh, the family. Here we go, Marianne. Come on over here. Again. Come on in, everyone. We'll get the family, the proud mom and dad. Well done. Okay, your sister. Thank you very much. I now have an announcement to make regarding the city's management team. I'm pleased to announce that after a nationwide search, the city has chosen a new fire chief. It's my pleasure to report that Kim Ayotte will be the new fire chief of Ottawa Fire Services. Chief, if you want to come up here. Chief, come on up here. Kim has been acting in this position on an interim basis since Ch Chief Jerry Pingatori retired in April. Le chef Ayat est bilingue et compte 29 années. He is bilingual, has 29 years experience at the fire department. Years of fire service experience. And as you know, the fire chief plays an important leadership role in our community. Chief Ayat brings with him a breadth of experience and strong professional relationships, which will serve him well in supporting Ottawa Fire Service's mission to protect lives, property, and the environment. I want to congratulate you, Chief, uh, on this new role. We look forward to working with you, continue to work with you. Bravo, Chief Ayat, et bonne chance dans votre nouveau poste. Merci. And good luck in your new position. Uh, roll call, please, Madam Deputy. Conseil Manette. Present. Councillor Middick. Councillor Harder. Here. Councillor Wilkinson. Present. Councillor El Shantiri. Present. Councillor Caudry. Present. Councillor Taylor. Councillor Shirelli. Here. Councillor Eglai. Here. Councillor Deans. Here. Councillor Tierney. Present. Conseil Fleury. Ici. Councillor Nussbaum. Present. Councillor McKenney. Present. Councillor Leeper. Here. Councillor Brockington. Here. Councillor Chernyshenko. Present. Conseil Cloutier. Present. Conseil Blé. Present. Councillor Derouz. Here. Councillor Moffat. Here. Councillor Kakish. Present. Councillor Hubley. Here. Mayor Watson. Le quorum est tient, Monsieur le Maire. Thank you. You have quorum. Young gentleman in uh, uh, the audience today who is a guest of Councillor Tierney, who has a great interest in politics, uh, Gavin Marion. Where is Gavin? If he could stand up. Nice to have you here, Gavin. Welcome. A confirmation of minutes, adoption de process verbaux pour le 11 juillet 2018. Carried. A declaration of interests, including those originally ri rising from prior meetings, declaration de conflit d'intérêt. Are there any? No. Uh, communications uh, as uh, presented. Regrets, Councillor Middick uh, and Councillor Taylor advised they'd be absent from the Council meeting of the 29th of August, 2018. Motion to introduce reports. Motion portant présentation de rapport. Councillor Harder, seconded by Councillor DeRouze, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That the Ottawa Board of Health Report 16, in camera, Transportation Committee Report 33, and the reports from the City Clerk and Solicitor's Office entitled Status Update, Council Inquiries and Motions, for the period ending August 24, 2018, and summary of oral and written public submissions for items subject to the Planning Act's explanation requirements at the City Council meeting of July 11, 2018, be received and considered and the Council receive and consider item 3 of Planning Committee Report 68 pursuant to subsection 35 brackets 5 of Procedure Bylaw 2016-377 and that the rules of procedure be suspended to receive and consider items 1 and 2 of the Planning Committee Report 68 for the reasons set out below. Suspension of the rules is being requested for item 1 of Planning Committee Report 68 to meet the statutory 90-day timeline for consideration under the Ontario Heritage Act and suspension of the rules is being requested for item 2 of Planning Committee Report 68 to avoid further delays in the development of the site and that the rules of procedure be suspended to lift the AMO communication with respect to cannabis retail consultations from the agenda in order to give direction to staff in preparation for the anticipated provincial legislation on the retail sale of cannabis in Ontario and that the petitions listed under communications on the City Council agenda of August 29th, 2018 be received. On the motion, carried, adopté, merci. Uh, reports, rapport, Ottawa Board of Health, uh, in camera, report number 16, rapport numéro 16, Conseil de Santé d'Ottawa, à huis clos. Is there any reason to go in camera? No. So I will read out uh, the Board of Health recommendations. The Council recommend the appointment of Dr. Sarah Funnell as Associate Medical Officer of Health to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care in accordance with the City of Ottawa Act 1999 and Health Protection and Promotion Act. Two, that the Council recommend the appointment of Dr. Trevor Arneson as Associate Medical Officer of Health to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care in accordance with the City of Ottawa Act 1999 and Health Protection and Promotion Act. And three, subject to the Approval of recommendations one and two, the Council transmit its recommendations for approval of the appointments to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. On the motion, Carrie, congratulations to the two doctors. I know our Chief Medical Officer of Health is with us. Thank you very much, doctor, as well. City Clerk and Solicitor, Greffier Municipal et Avocat General, number two, status update, Council inquiries and motions for the period ending August 24th, rapport de situation, demande et renseignement et motion du Conseil pour la période se terminant le 24 août 2018. Received. Planning Committee reports, rapport des comités, Planning Committee report number 68, rapport numéro 68 du Comité de l'Urbanisme. Application to alter the former Sisters of the Visitation Monastery, 114 Richmond Road, a property designated under Part, five, uh, part 4 of the Ontario Heritage Act. Demand vis uh, visant la modification de monastère des Sœurs de la Visitation sur la rue, sur le chemin Richmond. Carried. Thank you to all who worked on that uh, file, Councillors Harder and Leeper in particular. Uh, app application, or, excuse me, item number four, application to demolish 488 500 Bank Street located within the Centre Town Heritage Conservation District and to construct a new building according to final plans by Corps Architects received December 12, 2012. Demand visant demolir le meuble situé au 488 à 500 Rue Bank. Carried. I hope this uh, gets done quickly. Councillor, I know you'll put pressure on them because it's a bit of an eyesore. Okay, great, thank you. Item 5, Zoning Bylaw Amendment 1354 and 1376 Carling Avenue, Modification de ré au Règlement de Zonage 1354 et 1376 Avenue Carling. Carried. Dissent by Councillor Brockington. Transportation Committee Report No. 33, Rapport No. 33 du Comité des de Transports, Parking Spaces to Accommodate Cars, Cyclists, Place de Stationnement pour Voitures et Vélo. Carried. Seven, uh, item seven, uh, gateway speed limit signage in residential areas, panel de limitation de visite aux entrées des secteurs résidentiels. Councillor McKinney and Leeper have a motion. I believe this is a uh, technical to allow for 30 as well. Questions? Yes, okay, it so is. So we'll come uh, back to this. We have okay. uh, more uh, questions, so we'll just put that on hold. Uh, bulk consent agenda. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the bulk consent agenda? Est-ce qu'il y a des choses qui on va enlever pour uh, approbation en bloc? No. On the bulk consent agenda as presented. Carried. Okay. So back to item number seven: gateway speed limit signage in residential areas. Uh, Councillor McKenney, would you like to introduce your motion, please? 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, this uh, this motion just follows on the um, uh, the gateway speed limit signage in residential areas report that uh, came to Transportation Committee uh, August 15th uh, that uh, allows for gateway signage uh, for um, uh, communities for 40 kilometers per hour. Um, and this will uh, allow for uh, a neighborhood, a, a councillor uh, who, who is interested to actually uh, designate a residential area for gateway speed limit signage uh, for a reduced speed limit of uh, 30 kilometers per hour uh, that is consistent with our 30 kilometer per hour speed limit policy. So it just, uh, in, uh, in a nutshell, allows us to go to 30 where we feel that that's appropriate and where uh, uh, residents uh, are looking for that, uh, that um, speed limit that uh, uh, provides for the safety of, uh, of residents. Okay, uh, Councillor Harder, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just asking a question about the timing. So the report, I think, says that there we would be able to afford one uh, one gateway area in each ward a year. I mean, you know, I have over sixty thousand people. I think I will not be on this earth by the time I'd be finished. Uh, putting the uh, speed limit consistent at 40, and yet, you know, in the suburban community, we're in the PN, for example, all of our um, um, collector and our residential streets were 40K. Uh, since amalgamation and all the growth there, I have roads that have 40, 50, some of them have 60 on it. I'm just wondering, when I look at the map for Barhaven, and it shows that virtually the whole community could be a gateway, why would we not look at an option that would be cheaper, faster, more holistic, that as you approach Barhaven, you just have the signs up there that inform you, and where you have an arterial road like Fallowfield, like Greenbank, Woodruff, Strandherd, on those roads you would actually put the 60 up. I'm just, I'd like that for consideration because I think that it makes a lot of sense, and I don't, I don't want to pit community, oh, you're more important than, Longfields is more important than Half Moon Bay, it's more important than Stonebridge, et cetera. I think that all of it is, and since it all qualifies, why could we not do that? So that's my question. So you're asking the question of staff or yes. of the mover of the motion? Oh, staff, because okay. I'm, I'm talking about the, the report itself. Okay, so this I speaks think that's to one uh, Phil. Phil, term. if you want to answer that. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. So, to answer the question, if we were to do that, we'd have to put uh, the actual regulation signage on the arterial roads, which would say 40 kilometers an hour. Um, and then right after that sign, if it was like, say, Woodruff, which is uh, some areas of 60, we would put the 60 sign. We would then remove all the signs within the communities that say 40. It would most likely create confusion for people because you'd see a 40, then you'd see a 60, uh, for example, on, on Woodruff. And then you'd also remove the signs on the residential streets uh, where we're trying to get people to drive at those speeds. See, I don't agree with you. Sorry. I, I, don't, I don't agree with you because right now we have a lot of confusion because we have so many signs. Mr. Mayor, we have a plethora of signs on the streets. I mean, one, because we're a bilingual city, but just the roundabouts. I don't know how many roundabouts I have. A lot, what, 17 or something at least. And on those, I mean, it's hard to tell what you're supposed to do. You know, there's ones for the pedestrians, there's ones for the driving, there's this here, a road sign that says, this here's Longfields, this one's Bart Berrigan, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure across the city we all have that. I think there's a simpler way and a cheaper way to do this. So as you approach Bar Haven, where I have the sign that I've had for years, welcome home, bienvenue chez vous, I think there you say, like you do in a community safety zone, we have community safety zones. As you enter them, they say, this is a community safety zone. If you're caught speeding over this speed, you're gonna pay double or whatever the wording is on it. I would like to have consideration of that before budget. That's what my, Mr. Mayor, that's what I'm asking. That Before budget, we have that information to see if it's possible. I know that it's a, it, it's a, it's the opposite of what you're saying, Phil, but you know the way I think. And you definitely know my community. And you know that it's possible if we want to do it. And it would save us a lot of money and it would get us the results that we want. And then we would have really a, key, a true understanding of 
uh, Kanata South, Kanata North, uh, Manatic, uh, Navin, or wherever you are in this city, it would be consistent and it would be at the same time, not what part of Barhaven am I in now and you know what are the rules here? Because I think that that is the greater danger. So I would like that information prior to budget. Well, I think if, if that's a direction of staff, can you write it out, please, yes, please. Councillor? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Newsbaum. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I have a question on the motion and then a question on the report. Do you want me to tackle both at the same time? You're at five minutes to do it all. Okay, great. So uh, on the motion, uh, I support Councillor McKenney's motion wholeheartedly. I think um, it's a very wise way to move forward to give uh, flexibility on residential zones. One question to staff with regard to the motion and the bylaw change, though, is that uh, in the proposed language to change the bylaw, there's mention of... Um, a reduced speed limit of 30 kilometers per hour consistent with the 30 kilometer an hour speed limit policy. But the way the policy is currently worded is you would require under scenario two a petition process. And I think the report is very clear that it doesn't make sense to go with the petition process when you're dealing with gateway neighborhoods. So is it, um, am I right in suggesting that we'll need to change the 30 kilometer an hour speed limit policy to reflect the gateway to make sure that there isn't a petition process required in cases where the scenario two conditions are satisfied and we can go with a residential neighborhood of 30. Is that, is that fair that we'll, we'll need to make, make those adjustments? So the, the intent here with the 30K is that if, um, and the way the policy is written today is if the speeds, the operating speeds are less than 35 kilometers an hour, we don't need to do a petition. It's the areas where you're between 35 and, and 45 or 50, I believe, where you have to go through the process of petition, and we also then have to work with the ward councillor to find ways to narrow the streets to create that environment uh, where the, the speed limit will, or the operating speeds will be at 30 kilometers an hour. Um, and so the petition process is, is part of that consultation um, process. So for the, the policy itself, we believe that that's uh, the appropriate uh, way to, to move forward with. So. The problem with that is if, 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 if staff or a counselor or uh, community members wanted a whole neighborhood in your, um, I think it's document two, you use uh, part of Sandy Hill as a little uh, trial case. So let's say in that case, Councillor Fleury said, I have support for 30 kilometers an hour in that, in that, in that whole area. And you said, yeah, you know, uh, the lanes are no wider, the street is no wider than seven meters. All of the, the, scenario two conditions exist, not scenario one, scenario two. So the operating speeds are above 35, but all the other conditions apply. In that case, it would seem odd to me that you would require a petition process in that entire district of 67% of, of, of the residents. And that's clearly not what the gateway policy is intended to obligate. So are you saying that in that case, there would need to be a petition process for that whole area? Or is there an understanding or flexibility to say, no, 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 in that case, under scenario two, we wouldn't require a petition? I think there would be flexibility if the consultations occurred. The reason we do the petition is to ensure that all the residents on a certain street, if it's a street, um, are aware that this change is coming. So I think if there's consensus in the community that this is, uh, and it meets the criteria, uh, for the 30K, that that's something that we could uh, we could consider. I completely agree, and I think it's important. I just think that we need to change the wording of the policy because otherwise, um, your staff would rightfully, if if there was a request to look at more of a gateway approach for 30, your staff right now would rightfully say, well, you know, right now the policy requires uh, the 67. And, and, and I agree with you, there ought to be flexibility. It seems uh, overly um, overburdened to go into an, an entire neighborhood and expect to get the 67. So can I, as a direction, request that you look at adjusting the language of the policy to make sure that that flexibility is there? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Um, my second question is uh, on the report itself. Um, and specifically, there's mention of the fact that um, staff are looking at the individual uh, school zones, and which is a, uh, a very labor-intensive uh, process. Um, and so, I, but I appreciate uh, staff are engaged in that. I noted um, recently in the media that um, other municipalities, as a result of the legislation passing or the regs passing on May 1st, are looking at converting 
all of their school zones to community safety zones uh, for two reasons. Uh, one is the fines are doubled in those areas. Two, it doesn't require necessarily the individual examination of a school zone and then would allow um, automated speed, speed enforcement in those areas. Is that something that staff are considering in terms of looking at uh, more of a, uh, a blanket approach to maybe expedite the process of looking at school zones? Yeah, that's something we're looking at as part of our refresh of Safe Roads Ottawa. So uh, we've had some consultation and that's some of the feedback. So that'll be part of, uh, of that report that we brought forward in 2019. And that uh, okay. in, including uh, how we deal with school zones and, uh, you know, the, the suggestions that have been made in terms of creating community safety zones and doubling the fines, if you, as you've mentioned. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor Engelai, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a, a more of a comment, a quick follow-up on, on Councillor Harder's uh, comments about how we can afford or not afford. Just for those of you who, who weren't at the Transportation uh, Committee when this was discussed, direction was given to staff at that point to go off and look at alternative ways of funding this program so we could put more money in the program and get the job done more quickly. Um, in particular, one of, the, one of the requests of staff was to go off and look at whether um, future revenue from uh, photo radar could be used because we had already made the decision as a council that uh, funds from photo radar could be used for road safety and and uh, and traffic calming. So there, there are other pieces in play, if you will, to address the issue of how quickly this this can be uh, applied throughout the city and which neighborhoods are going to go first, that sort of thing. And staff is going to come back with a response to that direction as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor, we do have a direction, uh, I'll get back to Councillor Hardish, has a direction to staff, so we'll do that at the end after uh, comments and questions. Conseiller Monette, s'il vous plaît. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess <clears throat> what I find is frustrating. It's, uh, it seems so simple, and I think Councillor Harder touched on it. I can't understand what confusion would be if you would have a sign at the entrance of your community that says, 40 kilometers unless posted differently. I mean, what's confusing about that? If, if you go and it says 50 kilometers, well then it's 50 kilometers. Otherwise, it's 40 kilometers. So I don't know why we need a direction to staff. I think that's, to me, it's a common sense approach that uh, Councillor Harder is bringing forward. And, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer. And maybe and clarify where the confusion is on that. Well, the regulations require that we, we put the signs, the speed limit sign with the, the zone underneath and the starts, and then we also need to have one at the end. It's not like an information sign where you would see where, you know, the speeds in this city are unposted 50. We actually have to put the actual sign in there. So if you put those on all the arterial roads as you enter the community, those roads become 40, then you need to put right after that a sign that says 60 if that's the speed limit or 50 or, or whatever those streets are. So that's where the confusion may, may occur. It's something that we, we can go back, I, you know, we're, we're gonna have the direction uh, and then we can, we can do further review. But at this point, we would just be concerned um, that it would create more issues in terms of, uh, of confusion, which then becomes an issue in terms of enforcement. Okay, but any, any street right now that's not 40, you have a 50 or a 60 on right now. Well, if it's, a, if it's a 50, we don't usually sign it. So if it's a 60, 70, or 80, then we would okay. sign those. <clears throat> and just going back again to what I said, if, if it's just a matter of adding the 50s, it would be a lot uh, simpler and a lot qu uh, quicker to do it and probably cost efficient also to do it. Anyways, that's just uh, my view on it. I, I find we're over, uh, you know, overthinking this, and uh, it could be resolved very easily from... Uh, what uh, Councillor Harder uh, proposed. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Hubley, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, uh, Councillor Newsbaum touched on earlier about school zones. Uh, currently, like if the road is 50, the school zone's 40, and I, I believe uh, you've told me in the past that uh, that's an optimum situation because it uh, designates the school zone, makes it very obvious for drivers they're entering the school zone. So if we go to a default of 40 on all our uh, streets, the school zones then would default to 30? 
Is that the plan? Or in the case of like Councillor McKenney's motion, if that passes, if you make a whole neighborhood 30K, does the school zone go to 20? No, if, if the school zone uh, was brought to, like if the default speed limit for that street was brought to what the school zone speed, line, speed limit is, we would just most likely just remove the school, school speed zone from that street. So we would take away the notice that you're entering a school? No, you would still have the signage with that says you're entering a school area. You would just remove the speed limit changes because you wouldn't require it because the speed limit would already be at that uh, at that operation. Again, that's more you know for the collectors. The you know we're still uh, looking at using the existing policy. So any major collectors where um, you know if there's a school speed zone that goes down to 40, those wouldn't be removed. Uh, they would stay in place. Yeah. It's any street where the roads uh, the default became 40 based on the signage. And one of the things I think you would agree to, and, and from, from what experience I have in reading the reports and everything on uh, uh, what communities are doing with uh, traffic calming, speeds tend to be an operational speed. If the road is designed for a faster speed, you tend to get a lot of speeding on it, correct? Yeah, people will drive at what they feel comfortable at, and so if the road's been designed for 50 kilometers an hour, that's what generally people will travel at. Which is why your reports show we've had pretty good success with our traffic calming, like uh, the flex stakes, they painted signs and so on. We're getting double digit improvements in compliance to the, the speed zones. Is that going to happen just by changing the speed of the road? If we take a road from 50 to 40, does that mean you're, you're going to get a, a, a over 50% compliance with that speed limit? Or does it mean we're just going to get a whole lot more revenue with photo radar that w is coming? Well, I guess it depends on the road. Um, if, uh, if you put in measures like the, the flex posts and the speed boards do, they've been very effective to reduce those speeds, and you would expect to see uh, the speeds go lower. But if you just change a sign that says 40, 50 to 40 or uh, 60 to 50 or whatever, uh, we wouldn't expect any changes if nothing's been done to change the environment that people are traveling at because people travel at what they feel comfortable at. Right. So if I heard the Chair of Transportation correct, he's thinking of taking the money that was uh, going in part to traffic calming and moving it towards signs. So the idea of putting the flex, flex stakes and the paintings and, and the planters and things like that that are giving us good results, we're not going to be able to do that because that money is going to go to signs and we're not going to get the reaction that we want from the signs. So I'm not quite sure where we're going with this. So you're not touching the traffic calming? You had mentioned it. so. No, I think just to clarify, um, that uh, 40000 per ward, which was uh, something I'd committed to, uh, would remain intact for the kinds of traffic calming and so on. This would have to come out of a uh, general transportation budget, so it wouldn't affect the ward traffic calming fund. Okay. Okay, so we'll still be able to do that to, to deal with the actual operational speed of the roads. Then. Okay, thank That's you, right. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Good, good point, Councillor. Conseil Fleury, s'il vous plaît. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Phil, just going back to uh, the, the previous uh, r round of questions, I, I'm curious. So right now, uh, de facto, our residential zones are 50. What define that? Why is, who what? made that choice? Where is it applicable? Is it a choice that the City of Ottawa has made in terms of our residential street? No, it's through the Highway Traffic Act. So it says any unsigned road is 50 kilometers an hour. And that's why where we, we, we've been putting in the past the 40 kilometers on streets, we need to have a sign after every block because as a car comes onto that street, they need to be aware that the speed limits change. This new gateway signage will allow us to put at the entry to those communities a sign that says this whole area is 40, uh, which will uh, ass assist with removing a lot of signs that are there today or the need to have a lot of signs in the future. Right. And, and could the City of Ottawa define what is a residential street and, and apply a certain speed limit to it, that it'd be 30, 40, whatever that might be? Like, could we not flip it on itself? Well, the Highway Traffic Act, I mean, it, you know, we, the city has the authority to set, establish speed limits on their roads at whatever uh, the city desires to have that. So we can set the speed limit on any, any road in the city so that doesn't have to go through the province to get any approvals. Okay, but just to be clear, so if if council's <coughs> will was to define a certain speed limit for residential, could we do that? Without, well, you'd, have, without, you'd have to sign the roads. We don't have the authority to set a default speed limit for the city of Ottawa. That has to come through. So the highway traffic act says it's a default speed limit. This new change to the regulations allows us to sign those areas to let people know that within that area you can have a certain speed limit. 
okay. on residential okay. streets. Thank you. Uh, Conseil Claude Cies. Merci, Monsieur le Maire. Thank you. Is it uh, recognizing the Highway Traffic Act, uh, the default speed limit? Is it possible for the City of Ottawa to sign the entrance to the City of Ottawa that, unless otherwise posted, the speed limit in the city is 40 kilometers per hour, and that would encompass local roads and residential roads, but on arterials and and other major collectors, if it's posted. 50 or 60 or 80, it would be such. Well, the gateway signage uh, and what the highway traffic allows us to do is we have to post a sign that says, the speed limit sign that says 40 uh, begins uh, and it's a zone. So we would have to sign every entry point into the city, which are out in the rural areas. Uh, we would also have to sign every off ramp to the 417 or 416 because um, that's also an entryway into the city. We wouldn't be able to put up a a speed limit sign on the on the 417 at the entry to the city. Uh, so there's something that, um, that that's what would be required to do if we were to go that approach. Um, I think the bigger question then becomes if we did that, we remove all the speed limit signs that are 40. Um, but what we find is because of the way the roads are are, um, are built and we have, um, you know, where we want to have the lower speeds, that 40 kilometer of speed limit also acts as a reinforcement to remind people that that's what we want those people to be driving at in these community and residential streets. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a uh, direction to staff from Councillor Harder that prior to budget, staff take an outside the box approach in communities where an entire neighborhood uh, accepting arterials be assigned $40,000. Cost analysis as well so that council can consider the possibility of providing consistent speed limits ASAP and note a limit to one zone a year per ward. It's supposed to be 40 Oh, sorry, not 40,000, sorry. I wonder where that figure came from. So assign 40 kilometers an hour. Okay, so that's a direction of staff. Councillor McKenney and Leaper's motion carried. On the report is amended. Carried. Thank you. All right. Motion to adopt reports. Motion portant adoption de rapport. Councillor Harder, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That Ottawa Board of Health Report 16 and Camera Planning Committee Report 68, Transportation Committee Report 33, and the reports from the City Clerk and City Solicitor's Office entitled Status Update, Council Inquiries and Motions for the Period Ending August 24, 2018, and Summary of Oral and Written Public Submissions for Items Subject to the Planning Act. Explanation Requirements at the City Council Meeting of July the 11, 2018 be received and adopted as amended. On the motion. Adopt a carry. Motion, re motions requiring suspension of the rules of procedure. Motion exigeant la suspension des règles de procédure. None. Notices a motion for consideration at subsequent meeting. Avis de motion pour examen à une réunion subséquente. Councillor Fleury, seconded by Councillor Leeper on Canada's Great Kitchen Party. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, we will uh, follow up with legal staff and uh, Shaw Centre staff, but we'll put it as a notice of motion to see if there's uh, an alternative method. But uh, the notice of motion reads as follows, whereas Canada's Great Kitchen Table, uh, Kitchen Party, is a celebration of the pillar of Canadian culture, sport, music, and food, whereas Canada's Great Kitchen Party will occur on October 11, 2018 at the Shaw Centre and is expected over 600 guests, and whereas Canada's Great Kitchen Party is requesting to serve alcohol 5 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. on October 11th, whereas subsequent subsection 3.2 of Ontario Regulation 389.91, as amended under the Liquor License Act, provides that prescribed special occasion for the purpose of special occasion permits include a public event designated by the Municipal Council as an event of municipal significance, and whereas Council, at its meeting of November 23rd, approved the definition of event of municipal significance as being a single or recurring special event occurring on city or private property, which has a high economic and business benefit of residents and communities of Ottawa and the national capital that attracts local, national, international visitors and participants as well as a wide range of media coverage. And whereas Great Kitchen Party meets the council approved definition of municipal event, uh, of event of municipal significance, therefore be it resolved, the council declares Canada's Great Kitchen Party at an event 
an event of municipal significance for the purpose of the special occasion permit submitted by the event organizer pursuant to Ontario Regulation 389.91 as amended. Okay, thank you. We'll deal with that in the next meeting. Councillor uh, Harder, seconded by Councillor Leeper, uh, 121 Parkdale development charge deferral. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Whereas uh, 8609454 Canada Inc. Brazil entered into a deferral agreement for development charges registered as instrument number OC1975755 on March 1st, 2018. And whereas on April 26, 2018, Building Code Services issued a building permit to 8609454 Canada Inc. for the construction of a foundation and six levels of underground parking in respect of the property known municipally as 121 Parkdale Avenue. And whereas the Director of Title for the province of Ontario did not certify such agreement and therefore removed the instrument from the title of the property known municipally as 121 Parkdale Avenue and whereas 8609454 Canada Inc. and the city entered into the agreement in good faith for the purpose of deferring the payment of development charges and whereas 8609454 Canada Inc. intends to pay their development charges at the issuance of their next building permit for the aforementioned property. Be it resolved that Council approve that 8609454 Canada Inc. be permitted to pay their development charges at the rate that was in place for April 26, 2018, as long <coughs> as the next building permit is issued prior to December 31, 2018, and with adherence to all clauses within the executed deferral agreement, including interest. Okay, so that will be dealt with the next meeting. Any other notices of motion for consideration of subsequent meeting? Notice of intent, avis d'intention, notice of intent from the city's light rail regulatory monitor and compliance officer to submit his initial work plan for city council's consideration at the meeting scheduled for September 12, 2018. Motion to introduce bylaws, motion portant présentation de règlement. Conseiller Harder, appuyé par conseiller de Rue, s'il vous plaît. That the bylaws listed on the agenda and under motion to introduce bylaws, three readings be read and passed. Carried. Carried. Uh, I have a, a direction to staff I'll read out. It's also, I believe, on the monitors and was submitted uh, with your package from the city clerk. Uh, direction to staff, cannabis legalization consultations. Given the significance of the recent changes to the retail sales model for cannabis announced by the Ontario government on August 13th, the public commitment by the province to consult the Association of Municipalities of Ontario and the City of Toronto, in addition to other stakeholders on the new model and the government's intention to provide a one-time window under which municipalities can consider opting out of permitting physical cannabis retail stores within their boundaries, which is expected to occur very shortly after the next council takes office, and the government's further statement to AMO that they intend to move quickly to enable private retail stores for the sale of cannabis, I'm directing staff to take the necessary steps to prepare the new council to respond to the anticipated legislation, include, including as follows. One, that on the understanding that timelines are expected to be short, staff be directed to prepare options that could include an online survey and other public consultation outreach approaches that could be used to gather feedback in a timely manner for the new council's consideration, if feasible, based on the provincial legislation. Secondly, to submit feedback to the Ontario government during the consultations on the new retail model, including on potential zoning, enforcement tools, licensing, and similar issues that impact the appropriate uh, siting of cannabis stores in the City of Ottawa, and three, that the staff reach out to the new provincial government, AMO, and Ottawa Public Health, and the City of Toronto to identify any opportunities for a common approach to municipalities' ability to zone for retail cannabis locations, especially regarding separation distances. Uh, four, to prepare an analysis of the implications of any proposed opt-out option for municipalities to determine whether this is feasible, operationally possible, and enforceable for the City of Ottawa, including any relevant information regarding cannabis sale locations in or near the City of Gatineau through Quebec Société Québécoise de Cannabis. And five, to ensure that the work plan for the City's Integrated Cannabis Legislation Steering Committee reflects not only what is needed to be done to prepare the City for legalization on October 17th, but to provide Council and the public the information required to meet the municipality's obligations and options for privatized commercial cannabis sales under the legislation once it is known. And finally, that staff undertake an analysis of the powers the City has under the current Planning Act to zone cannabis manufacturing and storefront locations in the report to the new Council for their consideration. Uh, confirmation bylaw, Councillor Harder, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor, that the following bylaw be read and passed to confirm the proceedings of the Council meeting of August 29, 2018. Carried. Uh, we have two written inquiries. The first is from Councillor Chernyshenko, please. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Further to yesterday's planning uh, committee, as I indicated, uh, I would be bringing an inquiry today uh, on the topic of sports fields. Uh, sports fields are increasingly being redeveloped for use as private sports businesses, often removing long-standing community access and imposing significant new impacts, such as traffic and late-night noise and light pollution. As we can expect to see this trend continue, and as other cities and countries have taken steps to update their processes for approval and their operational bylaws, I ask the following. What are existing best practices in other cities? What type of changes might trigger the need for council approval? What tools exist or might be created for the City of Ottawa to better guide these kinds of operations so that increased sports opportunity can coexist with residential neighbours? Okay, thank you. A second uh, um, inquiry is from Councillor Leeper, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, spring street sweeping was late to be completed in several areas of the city in Kitchissippi Ward in 2018. Can staff please provide an answer as to why this was the case and how work will be completed in a more timely fashion in future? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Egli has an inquiry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in light of the uh, upcoming legalization of marijuana, does the city currently have a marijuana in the workplace policy to deal with the following? One, on-site use of medical marijuana. Two, the use of marijuana during work hours and or time restrictions as to the last usage of marijuana prior to reporting to work. If so, please provide a copy to council. If not, please report to council with a timeline as to when one will be available. Okay, thank you. Um, adjournment, Councillor Harder, please. Seconded by Councillor DeRuz. That the proceedings of the City Council meeting of August 29, 2018 be adjourned. On the motion, carried. Adopté. Merci. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned.